Hey, what's going on there, folks? It is Earthmaster here jumping in on this Monday early evening. Yeah, it's kind of early, 5.20 p.m. on December 14th, 2020 is the date. West Coast time, of course, 5.20. Uh, kind of looking at the Earthquake 3D globe, and we're looking at a whole bunch of earthquake activity out there. We're talking about some major movement over the last 24 hours there with some deep cluster quakes out there around the Fiji Islands area and just south of there. We'll get to that here in just a second. Also some deeper movement. You can see the staggeredness, staggered I should say, of the quakes up here just off the coast of Alaska along the Aleutian Islands area. Overall we have seen some major deep plate movement along the western part, or not the western part, but along the Pacific plate in general. Take a look at over here at Chile too. We talked about this in the last update video here where we've seen some deep movement. That is continuing as well over the last 24 hours. I mean, take a look at the globe. Not too often do we see this much deep movement taking place out there along the globe. Maybe we'll see one or two quakes here, very deep along the Fiji area, but we're talking about clusters, not only in Fiji, we're close to Fiji, but along other areas along the Pacific Plate and plates that sit right next to it. Let's go ahead and swing over here to the USGS map here and we'll go into a little bit more detail. The latest quake here in Nevada, a 4.3 strike, and we'll get to that here in just a second. That comes after a 4.9 earlier today. There's the movement that I'm talking about there in the, well, Fiji over here, Samoa, Tonga region. Take a look at that. That is a huge cluster of deep movement. Look at that. 4.9, 623 kilometers. 4.6, 526. This one's pretty deep too. Another deep one, 100, 199 kilometers. 574, 196, 528. These are all deep, majorly deep movements. And it's got me a little worried, folks, because, like I said, something big is brewing out here. I... And I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking, even though we had that six-pointer out here a couple days ago, right? where was it, right around the Taiwan area? Let's go back, well, I believe that's where that six-pointer struck. We haven't really seen a whole lot of major release and pressure up here where we're always seeing earthquakes. I mean, we not a day goes by where we normally don't see earthquake activity up here above 4.0 uh, right along this part of the western northwestern part of the Ring of Fire, the Pacific Plate. This area is super active, but it hasn't been. So I believe, I, I'm pretty strongly um, putting my word on this here, that, that potentially we could see a much larger quake out here. It's just been all too quiet. And now we're seeing this major deep movement. Uh, something's coming, folks. There's something major, big that's coming. The deep earthquake activity continues up here in the Alaska region as well. Take a look at the the, uh, the page over here to the left, or the list. These earthquakes are kind of spawn out here, but look at that. There's kind of like a you see you guys see that little pattern right there. And these are all deep major movements there. Of course, the subducting area sits along here, right? So what we're seeing here is the subduction of the Pacific Plate along a huge area stretching into northern or parts of central Alaska. These are deep quakes up here as well. Look at that. These are not surface quakes. 2.6. Well, not, they're not big, but the depth is very important. 116 kilometers there. This one over here. Well, that's pretty shallow there. 115 for that one. If we follow that trail, 101 kilometers for that one there. See what this little twin is. Another 101. 56, that's still pretty deep. But of course, the closer that you get over here to this subducting area, you know, the, the main point of subduction right here, the shallower it's going to be. 38, 230. That's, man, we're talking about some major deep movement out there, folks, along this part of the uh, subducting area. With very minimal, very minimal earthquake activity over here, folks. Look, I mean, 
it's just odd. It's very odd. And when I, when I, uh, when I see a long spell of quiet activity along an area where we normally see large amounts of earthquakes, whether it be 4.5 here and there, you know, every other day, when we don't see that, that means something is locked out here and it's getting ready to pop. This is a very important area to keep an eye on for some major, major earthquake activity. Um, they did have a six pointer earlier out there in the Chile area, six point, uh, yeah, six pointer there, 114 kilometers into this subducting area. You got the subducting point of contact out here inland, of course, inland downstream at down dip, 114 kilometers there below the surface. And that deep movement continues inland underneath the surface here, underneath Chile, underneath parts of these, uh, uh, these areas here, 232 kilometers below surface for this one up here. And there's another deep earthquake right there, 113 kilometers. There's just, I've never, I, I can honestly say I've never seen this much deep movement anywhere on the globe in a 24 hour period with this much with this much of a trail of activity and you can see that trail kind of continuing over there as well if you look at the timestamps here these are the most recent ones over here we go back to the older ones uh, that sits down to the west here or southwest and um man it's just it's blowing me away it's pretty scary uh california has been relatively quiet nevada not so much Major movement out there in Nevada today. Let's go ahead and check California real quick. Southern California, latest quake down here, southeast of Marietta. Nine point or uh, nine pointer, yeah, right. Point eight at nine point eight kilometers below the surface. No major swarming to report. A couple small earthquakes here along the Brawley seismic zone and the north part of the Imperial Fault. San Andreas Fault sits relatively quiet for the moment. Ridgecrest area, very quiet when it comes to their um, aftershock activity. Normally, they we're seeing quite a few more earthquakes in this, but, uh, you know, eventually those aftershocks are going to have to stop. Uh, the, you know, the uh, rupture of the earth there down below. Probably coming to a halt there. Uh, and then eventually this will build up more stress for future earthquakes. But the activity in the Nevada region is just... Um, it's way out there today, folks. We're looking at quite a bit of movement. The 4.3 struck just a short time ago. We're looking at uh, 035 um, UTC time, which which puts it at uh, 035. Oh, an hour or so ago, somewhere around there. In this area which is kind of strange because uh, the majority of the quakes that we have been seeing have been over here around the Candelaria Hills. They did see a four point, uh, let's see, let's see if they downgraded it or not. Was it 4.9? Ooh, they did. 4.7 right there. A little bit further west. We're starting to see just activity continue to inch further and further to the west here along these uh, fault systems out here in the Nevada desert. But right now looking at this puzzle of, of uh, seismic activity shows that there's really no specific direction that these quakes may be headed um, there is the majority over here this huge cluster but to the east here this is where we're seeing the newer earthquake activity and this is kind of where the older earthquake activity has uh, taken place there i would say oh a few months back in this general area right here so we may be seeing uh, we may be seeing uh, some some more earthquake activity out here. I guess where I felt like an earthquake, but might just be my imagination. But you never know. One of these times I could be doing an update video, and the big one hits, and the stream goes down. So let's take a look at these depths real quick here. This is kind of important out here in the desert as well. Um, and they range anywhere from about surface 0.8 down to 10 or 11 kilometers below surface. That one there is a 24 kilometers. Uh, this kind of gives us a general idea of how much uh, 
or how deep the fault system sits out there. 4.7 was 5.2 kilometers. Um, just varying in depths out there for sure. Overall, um, man, I tell you what, California is just, a, I, I don't get it. I don't understand how they're so lucky. It's just been so quiet here along a region where so much stress has built up. It's just, it's going to be unreal when it does unleash. Activity in Nevada has calmed down in the Sawtooth Fault System area, but we're seeing more movement, new movement over here to the northeast. You can see this here kind of closer to Yellowstone um, in an area where we haven't seen earthquake activity before in the past. You can see a 3.7 being the main quake followed up by many one pointers, 1 1.6 or so. Uh, so we kind of have to keep an eye in this area. I don't see any any major specific fault systems out here. Uh, looks like the Red Creek Fault or Red Rock I should say and uh, the Lima Reservoir Fault either way inching a little bit closer over here to the Yellowstone area right uh, oh I don't know about 60 miles or so some earthquake activity right outside of the park it looks like a couple small microquakes We'll check out the uh, activity there in Yellowstone National Park. We'll zoom in there. There's that new earthquake activity there, and it kind of shows the. It shows the. Let's go ahead and bring up the. Uh, well, let's see if I can bring that up. Where'd it go? Okay, never mind. Let's uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and zoom in here. Looks like there's some older quake activity there where this new movement's taking place, but not much, not much at all. We'll shoot over here to Yellowstone and um, not a whole lot of movement. A couple small microquakes there. Looks like, but that's kind of older earthquake activity. Although, if you look at the Yellowstone seismographs there, you can see some localized uh, swarm, well, earthquake swarming going on there in the Little West Thumb promontory. Grant Village area, I guess we can look at Little West Thumb here. I can see these specific localized quakes. There's about three of them right there um, over the last couple hours, and then a couple more further back. These are uh let's see here i believe that's the uh some of these may be some from the uh earthquake activity in nevada a lot of seismograph stations are very sensitive and you can actually see that being picked up on uh, the majority of stations out there and also it could be some of the activity that's taken place in the new area of idaho as far as localized earthquake activity just a few earthquakes um, ramping up down there in the southern section of the park. They got this one kind of blasted up there. Really strong. And uh, I mean the sensitivity. Definitely trying to pick up. Uh, it's picking up a lot of stuff from far away pretty strongly. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I tell you what, it's just, it's kind of crazy. I haven't checked the trimmer today. It's not up and loaded yet. Normally it kicks in right around 6 or 6.30 p.m. West Coast time. So we'll look at yesterday's, last night. And you can see some movement along the Cascadia subduction zone there. Northern California has seen a pretty large cluster there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone downstream, way down below the surface there in the slow slip area. Also in Southern Oregon again, seeing some renewed activity. So overall folks, we're looking at potential for some, uh, some major quakes taking place out here. I mean, I've always said whenever we see deep movement, and I was talking about maybe one or two deep earthquakes, we're looking at the potential for larger surface quakes out here in the region, somewhere along this plate. Preferably, most likely in the quiet areas that we haven't really seen much movement going on. That's an obvious sign of some stress buildup. But when we see a large cluster of deep movements, 
uh, that's even more of a dire warning to take heed and to be prepared just in case a major quake does strike out here. There's major movement going on. We've seen it in Chile a couple days ago. That is continuing today. Now we got the Tonga, Fiji Islands area, Samoa region, seeing just a line of deep movement. And not to mention up here to the north. You can see this sharp as sharp as day. I should, or I could say sharp as the moon, but then again, if you can't see all that well, then the moon's not all that sharp. But you can see it out there, folks. Deep, very deep movement out there along the northern part of this subducting area of the Pacific Plate. Something's brewing. The best thing to do is be prepared, folks. We could see uh, some major movement out here real, real soon. I will keep... Uh, I'll keep the channel updated as quakes come in. They did have a total eclipse of the sun down there in South America. It's kind of odd because, well, not the eclipse, but the earthquake that struck right around the time where the uh, eclipse had just started. A six-pointer struck out there. Uh, the totality area was just down here to the south, but just kind of odd how we've seen the six-pointer strike right as we were getting started with the, uh, the eclipse of the sun. But I believe that's just purely coincidence because of the deep movement that we have been seeing over the past 48 hours or so in the Chile, South America region. But for now, looking at the graphs, they remain relatively quiet. I do have uh, just the standard ones popped up there all over the globe. But keeping an eye on things, folks. The Earth is very active right now in the plate tectonic department. And we're kind of monitoring everything that's going on, and we will uh, continue that. All right, folks, have a good night. Unless something else happens, we will talk at you guys tomorrow. Uh, as far as solar activity goes, we'll cover that uh, just real quick here. Take a look at the solar activity. I have included that onto the live stream there. There was a small flare that popped up from a sunspot, a very small sunspot that popped up a C flare. Potential for a C flare looks like about 25% at the moment. Uh, as far as storms go, not a whole lot of uh, potential for storming go going on there in the solar weather department. Here, here it talks about the solar flare that kicked off there at AR2792. It unleashed a C4 class solar flare today. And um, yeah, you can see it right there on the sun. Not a big one. But uh, surprisingly, it did pop off a pretty good sized flare there. Pretty impressive for a little little baby of a solar flare, or a little baby of a sunspot there. So, All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a good night. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe, everyone.